Okay, so this is a great lesson from eslbrains.com. The lesson is called, When a Crisis Strikes a Good Leader... Dot, dot, dot. So this is a C1, C2 level lesson. It's for anybody who is really proficient in English. There's a lot of advanced vocabulary and advanced discussion questions. So in this lesson, you have a video here, which I will put in the next segment of this post. You can watch this video. It's really great. There's a lot of good information. And then after you watch the video, you can try the worksheet. So what I'm going to do now is just go through the worksheet a little bit and just talk about some of the terms and the questions. So here we go. This worksheet and lesson is all about leadership and it's based on a TED talk about how good leaders function and how they operate. So going into the worksheet here, we have, uh, let me just move this, okay. So the name of the lesson, when a crisis strikes a good leader, dot, dot, dot. We're going to read the quotes and discuss whether you agree or disagree with them. And you can let me know in the comments or whatever you want to do. So the first quote here is, leadership is not a popularity contest. So in the video, um, the speaker talks about Ed Bastian, who is the CEO of Delta Airlines. And she talks about how during the pandemic when everything was uh, starting and happening and things were getting shut down he made sure to have direct communication with all the employees even though they didn't even know what was really happening and they didn't know what was going to happen but he wanted to have communication with them to reassure them so he says here leadership is not a popularity contest do you agree or disagree with that here's my answer in my opinion I feel like leadership should not be a popularity contest, but it seems like more and more these days, it seems like it is. It seems like people are trying to attract voters, which totally makes sense, but they are trying to be popular amongst everyone uh, so they can get the most votes and so people will appreciate them and want them to stay in power or stay as a leader. So being a leader, you kind of have to um, wrestle with this idea of appealing to everyone, if that is your choice, appealing to everyone, but also making good decisions. And I think to be a good leader, it's virtually impossible to appeal to everyone because everyone is different. Everyone has different opinions. So if you are trying to really appeal to everyone, you have to realize that that's not possible. And you have to try to appeal to most people and just try to do the right thing and maybe try to convince the people who do not believe in you that what you were doing is right and you've really thought about it a long time and it's going to be a good decision. So I think it's all about trust. I think leadership uh, nowadays is becoming a popularity contest, but I don't think it should be. I think it should be about trust, and I think you should trust the people that look up to you, and they should be able to trust you as well. Okay, so next quote we have is, leadership is not about necessarily being the loudest in the room, but instead being the bridge or the thing that is missing in the discussion and trying to build a consensus from there. So consensus would be um, the idea that most people are agreeing. So maybe many people have different opinions um, of what they think should be done and you are trying to build a bridge so that these people with different opinions can be on the same page. They can be on the same page. Maybe they have different opinions, but for a certain issue, they come together and they have a consensus, which means they work together to get something done. Because otherwise, they're just butting heads and nothing is going to get done. So there's a lot of advanced vocabulary in that. And this is a quote from the New Zealand Prime Minister. So in the video, it talks about how during the pandemic, she really helped uh, the people of New Zealand. And we know we've seen in the news and from evidence that New Zealand has done very well with their COVID cases. So, and it's all about leadership. So we're going to look at number two, read the list of words that are used to describe leaders and discuss 
the questions below. Okay, so we have some great words here. So we have autocrat right here. Now an autocrat is um, someone who takes complete power. They have complete power. They are number one. They are like a dictator. So if I go to Google right here, um, the autocrat, autocratic leadership, it's focused um, on the command by the leader, some dictator, uh, something like that. There's a separation between the leader and the team members. It's uh, the work structure is very structured or the work tends to be very structured, highly structured and very rigid. So there's really no room to, there's no wiggle room. There's no wiggle room, which means there's no room to kind of have your own thoughts and deviate from the leader. You have to follow the leader as the song goes, follow the leader. Okay, so uh, that's what you need to do in an autocratic leadership and it's really not the best thing a, a lot of <laughs> a lot of bad things about that a lot of well this is interesting there's some pros and cons when you're talking about business so maybe it's effective when action is needed during an emergency so we can see that with the pandemic so maybe there are some countries where the leaders are a bit more forceful and more rigid and they have more power so during the pandemic, if they want to lock down everything and make sure nobody goes outside, they can do that because they can do this action quickly and effectively because they have total power. But it can also tend to go the wrong way and they can make a lot of problems and you know it can be very bad for the people. So that is autocratic, autocrat. You can also call someone an autocrat if you want to kind of insult them. You can say, you are an autocrat, and that just means you have a desire for power and you are just greedy and all you want is to be powerful. So you're an autocrat. You don't care about anyone else. All right, and uh, going on here, demagogue. Demagogue is something I heard on the street. Uh, just in Toronto, someone was talking on the phone. I love to listen to people when they're talking on the phone or, or talking to other people. I just, you know, I happen... Sometimes I happen to hear some interesting things. And this woman was talking on the phone and saying, um, she's a complete demagogue. Uh, her demagoguery is terrible. So what is a demagogue? Um, demagogue is someone that just appeals to the people. So a political leader who seeks support by appealing to the desires and prejudices of ordinary people rather than by using rational argument. So this can be in business too, this can be in anything. If you call someone a demagogue, it means they don't really care about rational or logical uh, decision making. They care about appealing to people and that would be the idea of a popularity contest. A demagogue is going to win the popularity contest because they know how to appeal to the people. So you can say, I don't like his demagoguery, and that means his action of being a demagogue. Okay, facilitator, uh, that's a really good one. That's so, I'll just say here, uh, we have some, ooh, that's not a very nice end. We have negative and negative. So they did want to, yeah, they wanted us to differentiate between the positive and negative uh, traits so or or words so facilitator would be a positive thing a facilitator a facilitator is just someone who facilitates things they are the bridge they facilitate um they facilitate better work practices better structure better things in the workplace or better things in the country. So they help things get done. They help others. They are a facilitator. They're building a bridge. Okay, instigator of change. Well, instigator, I don't know if this is positive or negative. I, I guess change is good, in my opinion. So instigator would be someone who does something. Um, they're not just standing around. They're an instigator. If you are an instigator, you are making things happen. You are doing things. You are productive. So an instigator of change is someone who makes change happen. Pace setter. 
Okay. Uh, I don't. I think this is kind of neutral, but we can say positive. So it's positive. It's a good thing if you're setting the pace. We use this a lot when in running, in jogging. If you're setting the pace, you are the guy at the front who is like determining which speed you guys are going to run at. So everybody's following you. They're following the pace. If you have a fast pace, people need to catch up to you. If you have a slow pace, people uh, stay behind with you. So if you are a pace setter, you are setting the pace for the workplace. Uh, this could be a bad thing because you could actually set a really, really slow pace and then the company falls behind and the business falls behind because you're going so slow. Or you could set a really high pace and um, your employees could get burnt out. They could be burning the candle at both ends. That's a great idiom to show how someone is working too much, working overtime. So I'm actually going to say that's positive and negative. And uh, yeah, I mean, instigator of change could be positive and negative too, because it could be some really bad change. You could just be changing things every day and the employees don't know what's going on and they just get fed up and frustrated. Okay, people pleaser. Well, again, positive or negative, a people pleaser is someone who wants to please people. Not so much like a demagogue. A demagogue is kind of a nefarious thing, kind of a bad thing. People pleaser is just someone who wants to make people like them and wants to do maybe the right thing. So if, if you are a people pleaser, that's totally okay. You care about what other people think about you, and that can be a good thing. Uh, servant leader. So this one, I had to look this up. Servant leadership. Servant leadership is, um, wonder if I have it. Yeah, it's kind of like building the bridge, being a facilitator. Um, you can see that hand there. The employees are able to walk across. The citizens are able to walk across that gap because a servant leader is not like a traditional leader. They look at their job, they look at their role as serving the public, serving the people. And I totally think that's a great way of looking at it because then you don't really want to grab power. You want to do everything you can uh, to help, everything that you can do to help people. So they see leadership as an opportunity to serve others. It's a very altruistic outlook. And that means it's a very kind of compassionate outlook where you're doing it, uh, you're doing these things to serve others. So they share power and control and they want to drive engagement. So they maybe delegate some tasks. This could be definitely something you do in business. They listen. Okay. Uh, they understand it's not about them. So this comes from Servant Leadership Academy. So definitely they think this is a good thing, which I understand. Traditional leader, maybe they uh, seek leadership as a rank to obtain, like they want that high rank. They are the leader. They use power and control to drive performance. They measure success through output. Uh, they speak instead of listen, and they believe it's about them. Okay, so as opposed to understanding it's not about them, it's about the people. Uh, so I think that's definitely going to be a positive thing in my opinion. Maybe you disagree. Torchbearer, we don't really use this a lot, just someone who carries a torch and uh, this relates to business and, and leadership because if you are a torchbearer, if you think about all I can think about is the Olympics, um, obviously there's some other stuff here, like some games, but if you think about the Olympics, they light the torch and the person who carries the torch at the very beginning, they are like the instigator of the Olympic games. They begin everything. They're very important. So a torch bearer is someone who maybe does something for the first, they do it. They are the first person to do it. They are very important and everybody follows them. Okay, that one I don't, I, I'm just going to put neutral because, well, I'll put that because I don't think that's really anything. Uh, unwavering captain. That's like, if you're on a boat, 
and you have a captain and uh, they run into some trouble the captain will be unwavering which means they don't hesitate they don't shake they don't get scared they don't show any emotion unwavering when i think of that i think of like just a statue like unwavering they're just going ahead they know what to do they don't want to get lost in their emotions so an unwavering captain would be someone who is a leader who does not change their mind a lot does not uh, get burdened by their emotions i don't know if this is good or bad this could be positive or negative because that could also mean they're very stubborn if they are unwavering and they say no we do it like this we have an emergency we do it like this they could be wrong and they could not be open to change or suggestions visionary mm, that's a positive thing visionary someone like steve jobs they introduce something new something that's never been done before something that will change the world so they are a visionary all right so it's running a bit long here 16 minutes i think i'll just wind up and look at these questions what do the words mean in the context of leadership we talked about that uh which of the words represent positive and negative personality traits we talked about that too in your opinion what type of leader is the what type of leader is the best leader we'll talk about that why and then the next one which is the uh what is the worst type of leader you can imagine okay so the best type of leader for me in my opinion is someone who serves the public someone who serves the people who are following that leader if they have the mindset that they are doing everything in order to help and in order to serve with a very altruistic worldview then i think that can make a really good leader so we were talking about the new zealand prime minister if that prime minister is looking out for their the citizens then she is definitely going to make sure that they are safe and not getting infected with the virus which we can see she did and she did a lockdown very early on the cases were very low so i feel like she had the citizens best in best interests in mind she had the best interests in mind the citizens best interests in mind that means she was there to serve the people which ultimately when you're in politics by definition you should be there to serve the people but it can get a little messy when people get very power hungry okay and what is the worst type of leader you can imagine well the exact opposite someone who's not there to serve the people someone who wants power someone who wants to have full command someone that is a bit um greedy well probably very greedy so we're talking about like the worst leader so that's just someone that is out to wreak havoc they enjoy chaos and destruction um and and i think another element of that would be they think they're doing the right thing so that i think that's a very dangerous combo if they're they're doing these terrible things but during all of that they think they are doing the right thing and they think what they're doing is righteous and maybe they have some uh belief that they are helping the world somehow whereas on the other side they might be causing a lot of problems and damage so that's it um that is the first part of this lesson when a crisis strikes a good leader dot 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 this is c1 c2 level if you want to respond and talk about this put some stuff in the comments send me a message anything is good uh, i hope you enjoyed that lesson